Thank you. So we may start uh, just in this way. Mm, I think we, we know the Seeker Zero's problem. We try to eliminate such a, such a mm, zero. It, it is very unusual. It should be for the real, <coughs> real primitive characters, the corresponding L function may have a zero, which is very, very close to one. That's a so-called uh, lambda Seeker Zero. But uh, of course, if we assume the generalized Riemann hypothesis, we know no such a zero <laughs> exists. But uh, now we know if it uh, exists, we wish to eliminate it. But uh, if it uh, exists, exists, then something very, very interesting will happen. This, we have a better zero, very close to one, but uh, for other functions, other L functions, maybe the distribution of the zeros could be very regular, so something very interesting. So here we start, let's say, we assume chi mod d is a real primitive character. I just say something like this, and for the notation, I say the L is <coughs> the logarithm of D, natural log, and uh, we assume A is a large constant. That could be arbitrary large. <coughs> the question is, if the value of the L function of the chi at s equal to one is very small, very close to zero. That is equivalent to the existence, the existence of the lambda zero zero of L s chi. We say it is less than a very negative power of the logarithm. Then what will happen? And also, we just say, we introduce, say, if this, mm, <coughs> if this, uh, this inequality holds, then what will happen? Then we try to introduce a, a possible method to <coughs> derive a contradiction eventually from this. So we consider a big set of uh, primitive characters, very big set in comparison with the modular D. And also for these characters, we consider the corresponding L, Dirichlet L functions. Then the distribution of these Dirichlet L functions in a given region, the region is relatively small. So we introduce th the following like this. We say P. I use a capital P here. In, in one of my previous paper, I <coughs> use Q, capital Q. But that's no, no big difference. <laughs> P is very large. But we say P is large uh, in comparison with D. Maybe we, sh we should say in the logarithmic uh, scale. So that is, we say, If d is a very large, d goes, uh, goes to infinity, then this also goes to infinity. So we make a choice like this. <coughs> p equal to the exponential of L. Here we may say that we take a log, log again, maybe we take the square, maybe this is a cube or fourth power, that doesn't matter. So P is like this. Now we introduce a set, a big set of primitive characters. Here for technical reason, we just consider the, the prime moduli. 
So we introduced a big set, the capital psi equal to the primitive characters psi modular here is a small p, small p is a, con is a prime. And uh, what is, uh, what for this p? So we know that we just assume this is our, the, the big set. And we know the number of the elements in this set, it is uh, approximately equal to that should be the p square multiplied by a something like this. Here p, the small p de, uh, denotes a prime, always like this. And also we introduce a region which is uh, relatively small, just has the size of the, the, the log of d, just like the L, the powers of L. S equal to sigma plus i t. And uh, the real part, of course, we are only interested in the sigma is between zero and uh, one. And uh, for the t, t we may say here, we just say t, just is close to a, a certain power of L. It is less than, we say, like uh, the two the square root of L multiplied by a smaller factor, maybe this is both power, something like this. So these are just prepar <coughs> preparation uh, for our discussion. We introduce these. And uh, only for the technical reason, because eventually we have to evaluate a certain, a bigger discrete, <laughs> the discrete mean, if the, mod the moduli are prime numbers, that should be simpler. But in general, it's, it's okay. So we just started this. Now we say, we assume our introduce. We say this is formula one. Eventually, we try to derive and contradiction from this, but now the process is somehow very lengthy. It's not very, it's not direct. We need to do something more than, let's see what's going on. First, uh, we say there exists an a subset, I say psi one of the psi such that The first one is, this is, this is also big set, <coughs> big set, because the difference, this one is, is from the side to this subset, the, the difference is very small. I say A1, which, is, which made depend on A anyway, this is also a large number. And here we say that A1 is a large constant. I just say it's large. And uh, I say the difference, it is just the complement. Complement of psi one in Then the second one, for each small side, this is a <coughs> primitive character mod, mod, mod P. All zeros of 
L, S, now we use psi. Actually, we may, mot we may have the second L function. Now the psi times chi is also a primitive um, character modular P, D. In this given region, uh, first uh, they are simple. And uh, then, second, real part, they are all critical zeros. Then the next, and uh, the gap between any consecutive zeros. Of of this function, is approximately equal to the pi over 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 uh, we say the logarithm of p. So first, uh, we may, because this complement, uh, the complement of psi one in psi is small, so we, 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 may, we don't worry so much about that. And uh, for each psi in this, in psi one, the zeros of this function has, have such a nice property. The first, uh, we say they are simple, but uh, in, in say this region, omega. Simple, yeah, we, we believe they should be simple. Although unconditionally, we are unable to prove them. It. <coughs> the second one, all, all the zeros, the real part of each of these zeros is one half. They are all critical zeros. We believe this should be true, although Unconditionally, we are unable to prove them. That is also true. But now the gap, the gap addition, it's a very unusual. So the, the gap between any consecutive zeros, it is just close to this quantity. We just remark mm, the average gap of of zeros if we just consider the ls psi of ls psi in this region is approximately the average is 2 pi Yeah, it is. It is relatively. Yeah, it is already. <laughs> yeah, let me say why I move this uh, a little up. Uh, we say just t equal to t equal to zero. It is on the real, the real axis. At the real axis, if we look at uh, the approximate uh, uh, function equation of the functions like these. The gamma factor, the behavior of the gamma factor is some, somehow is uh, unusual. But if we lift it a little, now, now t is close to maybe the L raised, uh, L raised to 10, then the, the approximate uh, <coughs> functional equation for the, this one is very nice. That, these are all for the technical reason. Let me say something more about that, uh, why we, we restrict it to the P. This is, for this conclusion, if it is not a Q, uh, it's not a P, just arbitrary integer Q, something, it also works. We may make a variance of this addition. Then, 
we recall something in the theory of the Riemann zeta function. There are certain conjectures and uh, certain results on the vertical um, distribution of the zeros of Riemann zeta function. And then we know that these things, uh, uh, we have to assume the Riemann hypothesis. But here, we don't worry about this. The real part, they are all one half. We try, but we believe. We believe this is correct, that is correct, but the last one should not be correct. If we can de derive the contradic contradiction from this last one, then we, then we also we get a contradiction from that one. But uh, here, let me say, this result, in my opinion, is unsurprising. I think it is easier for many experts uh, and, uh, in the uh, analytic number theory. So now let's see two a contradiction from the, we say the gap addition, the last one. If one can, sh uh, can show, show that <coughs> So that I always say it's a row one chi equal to row two chi equal to zero. The chi is for some for s it just exists one chi <coughs> something like, this. and uh, they are they are distinct, not the same. But it's still it is less than say. Maybe it's one minus pi over. Less than the half of the average uh, gap, strictly less than. Then that's all. It's a contradiction. But to get the, in comparison with the vertical distribution of the zeros of the Riemann zeta function, if it could be a proof, it is very close to the one half, to the just the one. Maybe if it is one plus epsilon, maybe it's way for something. It has been proved. But to reduce it to the less than one here, that's very difficult. We are unable to prove it. But now we can say the, the gap position give us something stronger. So let's see. Now, from now on, we assume psi is in this one. These are all routine. We just take, we say, and uh, we write in my paper, I say, this is the reciprocal of that one, of the log of p. We take, we take uh, three quantities, very small, we say the beta one is equal to, so this one is just equal to pi alpha, is equal to negative one minus epsilon pi alpha times i, and the beta two, epsilon is a sufficiently small constant, equal to one plus epsilon And the beta three equal to two minus epsilon. Now let's look at a zero and a zero of this function. Let's look at it. We say this is rho, and that should be rho plus beta two. Here we have i, that should be 
rho plus beta 3. And uh, the beta 1 here, we have a neck P. Mm, this is uh, rho plus beta 1. Yeah, <laughs> let me say, from now on, thank you. We only concentrate on the functions L, S, psi. We, we, we will not discuss anything about uh, the second factor. We only concentrate on this. Approximately. But uh, the, 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 di the difference is should be very, very small. Yeah. Mm. So we just use the epsilon, that's enough. So let's see, look at uh, one thing. Now the, ga the um, gap position saying that between these two points, L S psi is not zero. And uh, between these two points, but uh, not equal to rho L S psi is also not equal to zero. Now we know that uh, because the L function itself, if we multiply it by a gamma factor, then on the critical line, it could be real, but itself is not real, right? We make a modification. We introduce the functional equation I just say gives in this way. This is a functional equation. I'm not going to write down the, the, <laughs> the expression for this, but uh, let me mention, because we take S in omega, the, now the in imaginary <coughs> part is, uh, is not very close to zero, then you, we don't worry about uh, this psi is the even character or all the character. We, it, it's a very, we can uniformly handle this factor. Then we take another function. This should be the reciprocal of the square root of this. This makes sense only if the real part is, the imaginary part is uh, positive, but we just say something like this. And uh, we let psi equal to And uh, this factor, we actually for each psi, we have two choice of this one, of the, this function, positive or negative. But that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Later on, we will see. Then what from the functional equation, we can see that if on the critical line, the psi of S, uh, sorry, this is C, C of S psi is real from the functional equation. Consequently, the derivative of this of C, but multiplied by I is also. And uh, this gamma factor uh, it itself is the has no zero, no, we don't worry about that. <coughs> so now, because between these two points, the L is not, L S psi is non-zero, therefore the C S psi is non-zero. It is real, of at least it is continuous, but it, between these two points, it's not, it does not vanish. Mm. Is positive. And also, we can prove by taking limit going uh, approaching zero, something like this.
this is the derivative because the, the zero is simple, so this makes sense. If we combine these two together, we just define one thing. Always we assume, <coughs> mm, oh, we already assumed that uh, the, the psi is in this way and the rho is a zero. So we just let's introduce <coughs> equal to the set of the zeros of the LS psi in omega. This is the for the imaginary part is positive. This factor is analytic and uh, non-vanishing. Therefore, we may define one square, the square root of this function. We have two choices here. Then we take the reciprocal of the square root. And later on, we will see the choice. Uh, it, is, uh, it is independent of these two uh, the choices. implies we introduce an expression. We multiply them. Yeah. Yeah, eventually it's eventually it's independent. Mm, sorry, I should put uh, this, but let me put it uh, here. We get uh, this one. Here, I just uh, let me say, we get uh, this conclusion not only we use the gap between the zeros is at least equal to that, but each, it is just an integral mul multiple of this quantity. So we can get this, this is a negative. So we say we did so much like this. Let's come, come back to the original question. How can we get a contradiction? We first, we assume the formula one. Then as a, uh, as a consequence, we did it again, again, again. Eventually we find we can introduce such an expression and we can prove because of that one, it is this expression. It is, first it is real and also it is negative. So I say this is a formula two. The next. I clarify from the uh, number to the virus dimension to the number of cells so that you do define zero by like this, where mm. you have like uh, that many of them, right? Not zero not say you just have to find one zero. <laughs> <laughs> so many, yeah, many of like them. Yes. We say to um, derive a contribution, contribu uh, contradiction from formula two. And uh, let me just do a little, uh, just pre uh, preparing work like this. We, we say S zero equal to one half plus the tenth power of, this is the center of, 
of omega. And uh, we use the, the small omega s is a weight. And the small omega the i p is always positive. And uh, we introduce a function, choose. not a function for each psi, inside one, maybe everywhere. Then to show that, that should be a double sum outside over all psi in psi one inside for each side which over all the zeros of l, l of s side in the region this is omega Rho has the real part of one half, and S zero also has the real part of one half. We have proved for each individual, for each psi and the rho like this, it is negative. But if we can find a certain function as or a certain weight, like this one, we take the sum, we say this is negative. This is the square of a absolute value. It is, it is non-negative, right? And this is also positive because now this one, we have this relation. If we can prove this one, then we get a contradiction. Now, mm, in the abstract, uh, I mentioned that we use something. It is mo this idea was motivated uh, by the work of uh, of uh, <coughs> Conray, Gorsh, Gorsh, and uh, and uh, on the on the the simple zeros of the Riemann zeta function. They also reduced. The the problem to evaluate a certain discrete sum. Here it is a double sum, like this. We try to, we choose suitable functions f of s psi. We form such a sum. And if we can prove a certain capital F, this is the weight. This is may not be very important. But we take it as a smooth weight. Otherwise, uh, for technical reasons. We can prove this is positive. Then a contradiction is derived from one, two. Then now the question is the next question. <coughs> okay, but maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, oh, we have too many, so many. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, we know in the world, in the whole world, that there are too many functions. <laughs> <laughs> we will here even we don't just ask it should be, it should be analytic functions, right? But too many. How can we choose these? We know that was at the very beginning. Maybe the work uh, starting by the so-called the modify the methods, maybe first introduced by Landau. Then anyway, the Selberg did, did so much, so well on this. Then Levinson, then Conray. 
used to study the Riemann zeta function. So here we just say our, our choice is it is a Dirichlet polynomial with respect to psi. Mm, the coefficient, I just say it is rho n psi n. It uh, takes this form. And I just say in analytic number theory, this is very usual. Th this is the, the, the coefficient rho of n is independent, of course, is independent of psi and uh, s, something like this. Next. I just like to say something in the theory of the Riemann zeta function. Mm, in order that we we are able to evaluate the, the sums like this, we have uh, constraints or, or we say a restriction on the quantity p, p sub one. If p sub one is too large, we are unable to control the, the error terms. So in the, <coughs> in the uh, theory of the Riemann zeta function, <coughs> uh, classically, the we say classically, but uh, now it is a, at most P1, at most could be just like the square root of P. We originally we have a P, right? Then in certain cases, maybe at most the P1 could be written as the P. Here we need a closed man sums <laughs> to, to estimate the error terms. And uh, there is a conjecture. The, it's called a very interesting, the theta equal to one conjecture said Said if this we take this replaced by one, maybe slightly less than one, then also we should be able to uh, to evaluate the sums like these. <coughs> That's a so-called theta equal to one conjecture, but it is n it has not been proved. It's just a conjecture. But in our situation, it is very different. We say this is the large sieve type discrete mean. Large sieve type should be uh, easier to easier to be handled uh, than just a single function theta s. So here, what I can say is, let's say this is the, the label. We may choose is admissible. Admissible just say if we choose P1 in this way, we, we are able to handle the, the error terms. We just choose this. Then the next, we, it is allowed that the length is very large, but like this. Now the next question, how can we choose the coefficients in the expression of this? Here, let me say something which is, which is some very somehow very interesting. If we choose rho of n, takes the form then maybe here it is a function of like this form p1 we say log p1 that's the so-called modifier modifiers in this way then with the f F, if we can choose the F super, suitably, then 
the main term, we can prove with some choice like this. We say, The main term is just zero. But this we have an interpretation why this could be zero. Because here, choose this one if we change the mu by the, the at the very beginning, the chi. This just behaves, the, this behaves something like the combination of the L, I just mentioned it. I'm not going to like this. So this is zero, but even from this, we wish eventually the main term in this way sh should be strictly positive. But we just say the main term is equal to zero. Still, we are unable to get the conclusion. But this is very, it should be very close. Now, which, what can we choose? And the next, it is a, a, the test. <coughs> Our choice is like this. <coughs> the coefficients are supported on, on the, those n. n is square free. And uh, n is free from small prime vectors. We may say, is maybe that maybe is they say like this, something like this. Then in this case, and also <coughs> this is square. The smaller power of p. Or maybe we may replace it by something like this, e raised to something. <laughs> that doesn't matter. And uh, the also we have a uh, uh, restriction that the rho n, they are bounded. Then in under such a <coughs> uh, restriction, still we have too many choices. <laughs> Of, of the coefficients. Then how can we those, <coughs> then in this case, what I can say is, Then we say the result, result on this double summits. And uh, we say, uh, I mentioned at the very beginning, if we choose this one, we use the standard uh, large sieve technique. The error term, we don't worry so much. It's easy to handle. And if we make such a restriction on mm. the coefficients, only one tiny problem happened. There should be another excep exceptional character, modular to say d1. d1 is much smaller than d. But if we make such a constraint, something, even we don't worry about these. So let's forget about the arrow terms. We can handle them. In this case, let's write down. I write down in a slightly, just a slightly different form. I say this is N. Mm. I, I, I didn't, I say if we do not put the constraint here, <coughs> then in the process of estimating the error terms, we should consider the possibility that uh, there is another exceptional character, mod d1. d1 is much smaller than d. But 
it, it, even in that case, it's not uh, difficult uh, to handle. But uh, under such a constru uh, construction, we don't worry in the error terms to uh, estimating to estimate uh, the error terms. Even we don't worry about uh, the small mod modulus. So that's I just say. Okay. Here the n is just a bigger quantity should be maybe it is L to one half than log L. Also this may depend may depend on the form of the weight, maybe so something. We don't worry. And uh, what is the capital C? C it is a quadratic in the general situation form of the coefficients and uh, C is bounded and also C is real this quadratic form is just we take we take the real part, so it uh, becomes, uh, how to say, the Hermitian quadratic form, something like this. So now the question, we say that this is the formula, yeah, formula five. The question is, in order that uh, to prove the formula three, we, d we need to prove this is positive. Now here we need to prove with the, the suitable choices of this one. Can we prove this? If we can prove the C is negative, then that's all. Be the, choice of the, choice of the, of the choice of the coefficients, <laughs> rho of n, yeah. Then uh, now, I, here I couldn't uh, write down the, the precise expression for the C. It is so complicated. But uh, what I can say is, I have tried some, some, uh, some special cases. We get some numerical evidence that says that uh, the C could be very close to zero. So, uh, but here we, you may complain. We say C could be very close to zero. Of course, it's not enough. But we say close to zero, we take uh, all of these are equal to zero, then C equal to zero, right? <laughs> that, but in a certain sense, that should be interesting, we just say. So we say the special case. Special form of and uh, bec because in that way, the average uh, order of the capital F is one. So we just say, mm, for n is greater than one. And for n equal to one, we can uh, define it uh, separately. We choose rho <coughs> for this one, we say the we just say it's supported <coughs> on either it is just a prime or just a, just a product of two primes. Either it is just a single prime, of course, the P is less than capital P1. And uh, we may say the P1 less than P2. And the product is also less than capital P1. Then what should be our expression for the capital F? It could be written as Let's rewrite it, but n equal to one is separate, only a single term. Mm. 
this is the just for OP. We say the P raised to S to the chi P. The coefficient is written as the so-called the G1. It is a maybe is a polynomial, a, a regular function. Then the second sum over the uh, product of two primes. And uh, here, I uh, let me put a, f a factor, it is log P1 over log, the capital P1, log P, small p2 over. And we don't have enough space, multiply by a function. Now, in this form, this depends on three things. We may just uh, mm <coughs> we may just choose uh, to choose this one separately. So the number the one equal to what, and uh, g one is what, g two is what. We recall that we, our aim is to, we wish the, the capital C could be as small as possible. If it is negative, then it is down. Then the, the C is positive, so we get it. Let me give some, the, the <coughs> in this special case, w let's give some, some results we can see. The first is given if we fix the, the g1, g2, there are two functions. There is exactly one choice of row one that minimize my z is c. So given g1, g2, we, we have only one choice of that minimize. So in this case, we take such a optimal choice of the row of one. So in this case, that reduces. Eventually, the c depends on only these two functions. The second one, we say given G2, it's similar. <coughs> this could be a little com more complicated. Exactly just one choice of G1 that minimize. C, G1, G2. Therefore, given G2, only one choice that minimi minimize that. So now, if we choose this G1, eventually C becomes a function or functional of G2. Now finally, why I say it could be very close to zero? From the point of view of a totally different uh, topic, the integral equations. And uh, the, the integral equation with the Hermitian kernel, something like this. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Mm. 
What? Yeah, that's correct. Now, finally, eventually, we say this. We wish this could be equal is negative. This is negative. Eventually, just means the capital C is negative. Then we are done. Let's write down. In our the special case, it could be written as in such a way. Here, the k of st is a Hermitian kernel. Later on, I will give the, the precise, precise uh, the expression for this. So this looks the way we see this sure has something to do with the integral equations. But here we say that doesn't matter. Here we have a factor, we, we have a factor which is y cubed. So if we choose <coughs> g equal to g sub 2y times the y, then we may rewrite the c g2 is equal to that's just, that's just a simple uh, changing of variable. Now it is just gy squared. It's a very standard in the. And here, because we re re replace it by g, g2 by g, so it is equal to. G, mm, So let me, that should be in this way. Here it is, let me say, k hat as t. What is a k hat? It is because the, the g, g is in given in this way. And uh, we may say, here we may worry, maybe S is close to zero, or T who is close to zero, we have some singularity. But here, that singularity never happened. If we, if we just, in addition, define the, if one is zero, it is equal to zero, then this kernel, even it is continuous, and it is differentiable, something is a very nice kernel. So we get uh, this one. In order that, in order that uh, the capital C is negative, we wish, we don't worry about this coefficient. We wish this could be negative. Now we say. If we choose number that equal to the smallest Mm, should be positive. Till now, I can't uh, determine this kernel is positive or not. It should be positive, eigenvalue of this kernel. 
and uh, we choose, let me say, H equal to the, the corresponding mm, eigenfunction. Then if we choose, uh, we choose, if we choose the G equal to H, then we find eventually this G is, 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 is not the same as G2, but we just choose something like this. This is the eigen, th this is the eigen function, the square and the here one. Therefore, if the smallest uh, positive eigenvalue this is less than one, C is negative. C is negative, then from this that we we get that. Because the, the C here, we have another factor with a minus two over pi, double negative. Now what is C? C equal to what? <coughs> the results on C, we say a simple test. Implies. And Oh, uh, what is numbered? We wish a number that as small as possible. Numerically. Yes, numerically. But uh, this is a little simple. Then let's say we use the so-called iterate. the method in the theory of the integral equations iterate kernel once. Let, let me say something. First about uh, this, I only use the, <laughs> the so-called the maple, the very simple one. I'm, n I'm not an expert uh, in the numerical computation. But uh, in my feeling, maybe this may not be true. It could be very close to zero, but never, say less, uh, never smaller than zero. But if it is just precisely equal to zero, Still we can do, because here we just use a very special form. We have some, something more. Then about th even, I tried something else, <coughs> like the number or something. If number is less than, then we can down. We can combine something else with that. We only, here is only a very special case. Right? And, but, uh, and anyway, maybe next time I may ask uh, <laughs> the help uh, from some numerical ex experts. Maybe in the computer program, it may not be, not be so difficult. Something, something like this. And then, actually, I, I said we consider this form. This is a very special form, special form. I consider a more general form like this, more general than that, but it could be more general, we say mm, n, n equal to one, we, we select it separately. 
rho of n is equal to then we have a function in two variables. Maybe it could be a polynomial, something like this. Mm. Oh, here, we, we put this in this as the first one. Let's say if f is independent of the second variable. So this is, we say it is equal to f y c. If f I is independent of the second variable c, it is equal to zero. Then with respect to d, this is, uh, this is uh, just uh, like, uh, this is the constant. This implies rho n is equal to zero. Here for n is greater than one. If f is takes the form like c times say g y, something like this, this implies rho n is equal to negative. But here we have the fact like this number the n over natural log of p1, then times the g. I consider such a, such a form, it's more general, that is, is a special case. Actually, we can get an explicit expression for the C whenever rho n is, and we choose a rho of one to minimize something like this. We can get an expression. It's uh, so complicated. But uh, some numerical <laughs> evidence from here, still, I think this may not be true, but I'm not very sure. If this is really less than one, then but maybe it's that's too cheap to, to get it. And uh, the last one, mm, as asked by Peter, mm, we may ask uh, what is our the function, the function, the, <coughs> the kernel Ks, this equal to what? I'm, let me write down the precise <laughs> expression for this case. But if we reduce it uh, to, the, to the integral equations, uh, or we use the iterator kernel, we have to deal with this function, not that one director, okay? So we say the Q, st equal to what? We only consider the st, now they are just between zero and the one. Mm, let me write down, it's so complicated. <laughs> and uh, we introduce another one, we say r is equal to minimum of uh, s and the t. And uh, we introduce the b1 is equal to the integral from zero to r c e raised to pi i c c c. And the b2 is equal to the integral from zero to r c We introduce these things. And then <laughs> the kernel is equal to 
1 plus e raised to minus pi i p minus s plus e raised to pi i p minus s plus e raised to 2 pi i p minus s. Then, one, two, we have, we have more terms. I made it, um, it's originally it's not such a form. We take the real, real part, uh, then this becomes a Hermi Hermitian, so that becomes D1 by is the conjugation. Sorry for taking your time. <laughs> but the last one, last one should be, should be little, the last one is a little simple. This is minus, so the second part is negative. These parts we can verify using cauchy schwarz it is positive. But the difference, till now, still I don't know, is it a posit uh, positive definitely. Here, this is multiplication. And uh, this is just the key we use it also. Using the iterator kernel method, uh, if we once, because we have the denominator like this, that made it not easy. But uh, maybe for a computer program, <laughs> it's, it could be uh, not difficult. And uh, also, let me mention at the very beginning, we say we say the number, the, sorry, I, I erased it. <laughs> I erased it uh, like this. We just test, uh, we say the G2, we use G2, not G. We choose G2, mm, Y is equal to one plus E raised to minus pi I Y. So th this means that GY is should be multiplied by something more. You may verify it. <laughs> <laughs> now, <coughs> as a conclusion, let me say something like this. We know the Landau Seeger uh, problem is, is very, very tough. So even sometimes I tried to another direction. Given the C, C could be just a quadratic form, it is in general form is very complicated. Can we prove this quadratic form is positive definite? If so, then, then this is completed <laughs> fails, right? But now, some, I just say some numerical elements or something like this. 
still these are just a simple case. Uh, why I say it, mm, I test one thing, we consider, I consider this form, but this form is still not very generalized. It's somehow is, we in general, it's very difficult to handle, <laughs> to handle this one. So I just consider several p the types of the two variables functions. Consider they are com the linear combination. Something could be very interesting. Why I said that if we if we can prove the number that is less than, maybe this is seven something, we can do it. But still it is. Hmm? Still something remains. <laughs> maybe we have to use, use a computer program, but I don't understand anything. I can only use a map <laughs> to test something very basic. And uh, we choose if this one, we choose this combined, some generalized, we put some more terms, maybe the three, the product of three primes, something more general. Then we, in this way, for these terms, the total contribution is very already very close to zero. If we add some more terms, the product of three primes, that could be, could be. I, I, I'm not saying. I just <laughs> make a display <laughs> of these things till now. We may continue. Even for this one, also, this is not very general form. Maybe eventually, mm, after, after uh, setting all the, uh, all the details, we may, we may need the help of the computer programs. And also one thing, what I say, what I got uh, something like, thi like this, like the, the 0 0.9965. Well, I got these last year before the summer. Then I changed uh, my, my attention to the bounder gaps. Then until now, then after submitting my, the, the bounded uh, gaps, uh, that, uh, that was the April of this year. I, j I just, uh, I turned uh, my uh, attention to this problem, but uh, only for one, one month after the May. Sorry, I have lost my, lost my concentration because, <laughs> 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 because too many emails, <laughs> emails, too many, like the, the media, the interview or something. In but now I wish to come back. My paper, it is almost done. Uh, hopefully I, I would have enough time to publish it uh, by the end of October. 